what do you say? What's the question of the day? I'm Professor Q, so glad to be with you. I have a quick question. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants. Hmm, a pineapple that lives under the sea? As a house? Could it be? Does that make sense at all? That a pineapple could sink? Or do you think a pineapple could float? That's a good question. We will surely find out soon, shall we? So let's talk a little bit about how certain objects can stay afloat and how certain objects can sink in liquid. And this liquid we're talking about is H2O. That's right, that's water. So I have my nice handy dandy tub here of an ocean water per se. And I'd like to ask you this question. I want you to make a prediction. It's getting to that time as the season is of our pumpkin. Do you think a pumpkin would sink or float? Did you make your prediction as to whether the pumpkin will sink or float? Well, as you see here, we do have a tool to help us identify the mass. And what is this tool called? You're right, it's a triple beam balance that helps to be able to measure units in grams and determines the mass of an object. So what is mass? Well, mass is the amount of material stuff, per se, of matter within each of that object. One misconception is the difference between mass and weight. Many times, we have individuals who try to use mass and weight synonymously, meaning they're the same thing. But are they really? Not quite at all because mass never changes. It is the makeup of what that object has. So if I were to go to the moon, my mass would still be the same. However, what changes is the weight because weight changes due to the force of gravitational pull on the earth. So this pumpkin here would be a different weight on the moon. Of course, it would be floating around than it would be here on Earth. Just a little fun fact for you. But let's go ahead and try this, shall we? Three, two, one, and ta-da! Yay! The pumpkin floats. This is so exciting. So the other questions I have, just going through my vegetable and fruit bin, is what do you think an apple will do. Do you think it will float or sink? And the question is, is there any differentiation between that of a green apple and a red apple and how it would actually react to this water that we have here? Well, in your notes, go ahead and write green apple and red apple and let's make this happen, shall we? Three, two, and one. Oh my goodness, what did they do? They floated. Fantastic. Okay, so hmm, we have the pumpkin and we now have apples. And the question I have, is the pumpkin inside the same as that of the apple? And if not, then why is it that they still can float? Inquiring minds want to know. Well, let's go further, shall we? Let's talk about this zucchini. Do you think a zucchini would float? Ooh, that's a good question. How many of you have ever been able to see the inside of a zucchini? Well, let's go ahead and make that prediction now in your notebook. Will that zucchini sink or float? Fantastic. Let's try it out. Three, two, one. Oh, that's exciting. It floated. 
Now, is the zucchini the same inside as it is with the apples and the pumpkin? Hmm. We'll continue to experiment, shall we? Let's talk about the squash, the yellow squash. Is a yellow squash similar to that of a zucchini? Perhaps. Go ahead in your notebook, make your prediction. Will it sink or float? Here we go. Oh, well, Professor Q, everything is floating. Why? Why could it be, even though we have all different variations potentially inside? Well, let's keep asking and testing. Maybe we'll find something a little bit different of a conclusion. What about this? Well, what do we call this? This is an acorn squash. And you say, hmm, is the acorn squash maybe similar to that of the pumpkin or the squash? Or the, excuse me, the zucchini? And the apples? Maybe. In your paper, make your notation and prediction of do you think that this will actually sink or float? Did I hear you say, oh, wait a minute. Is it, how, how heavy is this? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, does the heaviness of an object determine whether it can sink or float? Of course it can. Well, we have here about, oh my goodness, maybe about 242 or so grams that this particular pumpkin can weigh. And let's find out what this would be. Oh, that's really heavier than that of this pumpkin because the arrow went up. So we know that if this acorn squash is heavier than the pumpkin, do you think it's going to sink or float? All right, let's try it. Three, two, one. Ooh, and it's floating. Oh my goodness, can you not believe that? Hmm. Wow, that's really interesting how this is occurring. Okay, well, I have one more test for us to talk about, and that is, of course, the tangerines. How many of you just love that tangerine smell? Ooh, mmm, wafted, absolutely. So, will the tangerines sink or float? Write that right now in your notebook, please. Oh, why not? Let's see. Ooh, can I actually juggle? Maybe not, maybe so. <laughs> let's try that again. Woohoo! Three, two, one, and let's check it out. One, two, three. And what are they all doing? Floating! But wait, is this tangerine the same inside as a pumpkin, the squash, the zucchini, and the apples? Huh. They all floated. Well, is there anything that would not float that would sink? Well, let's talk a little bit about that, shall we? My question to you is, what would happen if we would peel this tangerine? Would that tangerine, without the peel, still be able to float? Go ahead at this time and write what you think would happen. Okay, well guess what? Handy dandy, here we go. I have one that's been peeled and one that's not peeled. And let's identify. One, two, three. Oh my, oh my, what is going on here? We see that the tangerine that's been peeled is actually sank versus that of the one that has it on. So why is it? That's a good question. We'll find out in just a moment. So why is it that the tangerine with its peel actually floats and when it's peeled, it sinks? Could it perhaps be the peel in itself? Let's find out. Let's test to see if this peel will actually float. And it does. Who thought that would happen? Well, what does 
this remind you of perhaps that is used during the summer in a swimming pool? Did you say those little floaties? That's right, that might go on your arms. You bet. Well, what do those floaties have inside to help make one float? Air. <laughs> Great air. Correct. So actually the inside of the peel has air pockets or also called pores. Pores like that, that you would see in your skin. And those pores allow for air bubbles to be trapped inside and allow for whatever it may be to float. And thinking about what's inside the pumpkin. Is there air inside the pumpkin? And if so, where? So thinking about that and how does that apply to the remainder of these vegetables and fruits? Hmm. Well, all of these vegetables and fruits are all different sizes, wouldn't you say? So let me ask you this question. What would happen if we had the same size object? Do you think that they would sink or float? Would it make a difference? Because as we see, all of these floated. And what is it that allows an object to float? That because it has less mass than the water in itself. It has less mass than one grams per cubic centimeter. So let me ask you this question. We have a block of wood. Do you think this block of wood would sink or float? Well, let's try it out. What happened? It floated. Wonderful. Well, what do you think would happen if I have another block of wood? Is that going to sink or float? Well, using your prior knowledge, of course, you would say it would float. However, let me ask you this question. I have the same block size as I asked before, and will this sink or float? Oh, ooh. well, why did that sink? Hmm, that's interesting. It's the same size. Well, let's try another one. What about this one? It's a clear square. Let's try it. Sink or float? You can even hardly see that one in the water because it's pretty transparent. That sank as well. Well, let's try another one. This one here is actually made up of a square, but it's aluminum. Do you think aluminum would sink or float? Well, let's try it. Oh, that hit the bottom pretty hard, didn't it? <laughs> Kaplunk. <laughs> so what point am I trying to make here? Does it necessarily matter that we may have the same size, but actually one has more mass than the other? And when we have mass, as well as the amount of mass that that volume, those particular molecules are taking up that space within that certain type of object. When we have mass and we have volume, we have something that we would call Density! That's right, density! Density, say heavy, 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 heavy. What does that mean? It means the amount of matter, how heavy perhaps that particular object is. Because if that object is heavier, more dense than water, more dense than one cubic centimeter, then do you think it's gonna sink or float? You're right, it's going to sink. If that object is less dense than water, less than one cubic centimeter, do you think it's going to sink or float? It's going to float. So what about those big rubber duckies that you might be able to see out there on the ocean? Why is it that they are able to float? Big rubber duckies, what are you talking about, Professor Q? <laughs> <laughs> Look it up, absolutely. Well, what about the big?
big tanker ships that are sailing the ocean blue. Why is it that they're able to float and not sink? Hmm. It might have to do with a force, a particular force. Can you figure out what that force would be? Buoyancy! Buoyancy, that's right. Buoyancy is that upward force that's pushing upward from the ocean blue and helping to stabilize that particular object or that big tanker on the water. Because have you ever heard of Archimedes? Yes, Eureka, I found it. It's called displacement. That when an object actually goes into the water, there is that particular object's mass helps to be able to displace that water elsewhere to help to be able to balance out. That's correct. Thank you for responding. So, good, better, best, never let it rest till the good gets better and the better gets best. I want you to think about what are other objects around your house or environment can you figure out if they sink or float? Hmm, that sounds like a great scavenger hunt to me. So, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. Have a great day.